I'm joined by Jim O'Donnell, a pr professor of marine sciences, also from the Connecticut Institute for Resilience and Climate Adaptation, where, you're, where you lead that organization. Uh, so, Jim, I first want to ask you, if you're the average person in Connecticut, you take your kids to school, you're just going out to eat, you're just living here, living your life, what's the stuff that the average person is going to realize and recognize when it comes to climate change? Uh, well, the, the, the first thing people are going to re recognize, I think, is that there's not much to see right now. Right? Yeah. What's going to happen is over the next 10 to 20 to 30 years, the occurrence of flooding along the shoreline will increase. And the costs of maintenance of coastal property and, yeah. and coastal roads will increase. And I think that is, is the first thing that people will see. Is it possible that we could enter an age, I know you're not an insurance expert, but there are parts of this country where you cannot get flood insurance because they know it's going to flood where the Connecticut shoreline might end up being part of that landscape, where it's going to be flooding so often that you just can't get that kind of insurance? Yes, I think that the, the costs will increase, and therefore the insurance losses will increase. Yeah. And uh, someone has to pay, you know, either the, the property owners yeah. or the general taxpayer. And that debate is going to uh, be difficult to, to resolve. Yeah. Uh, you and I spoke earlier off camera about the way Connecticut factors into the larger climate change debate, but also how there are things that our neighbors may do that we have no effect on, but then it affects us negatively. New York is considering some things with the East River, redirecting where that flow of water goes. How does something like that affect us here in Connecticut? The, the, uh, yeah, the New York City gets flooded uh, partly through the Hudson, the mouth of the Hudson, and also through the East River, which connects to Long Island Sand. And uh, so they're considering a, a, a gate across the East River, which they could open up most of the time and then close during big storms. Uh, the, the, it looks like the plan would have an impact in Long Island Sand, and the engineers working on that haven't really yeah. assessed how big that impact's going to be. But I think it's likely to mo modify the tidal regime. So we'll it would pre permanently uh, change how high high water is. We would have more water pouring into Long Island Sound, basically. Right? Well, yeah, it's a small amount, but but the the uh, tidal amplitude would decrease. We think. Got it. So the total water level at the shoreline for any particular storm might be slightly lower, but all of that is based on a few calculations that haven't really been checked fairly thoroughly. But there will be an impact, there's no question about that. Whether it's, it's how bad it is or, or whether it's, it's good it is up in the air still. But that would also, in theory, possibly affect some rivers and streams and everything else. Because right? changing the tidal amplitude could affect marshes. Because you would have a higher high tide is what that means, right? Or, or lower. Or lower, or, or or lower. yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's actually an interesting f uh, physics problem because of length of Long Island Sand is near uh, what's called resonance. Yeah. Yeah. You, if we change the length a little bit by putting a gate in the East River, you can detune it, and so it would be less. Interesting. Uh, it, it would amplify less. So then, how does a state like Connecticut prepare for something like that? How do we respond to something like well, that? Well, we have to be engaged in the planning and the assessment of the engineering and design, and it's un and it's unlikely that uh, the EPA would allow something that would that would have negative impacts on marshes and. Uh, and on Connecticut coastline. So there's a processes uh, that are in place to try and protect us. Got it. Jim O'Donnell from UConn, thank you so much. Thank you. Face the Facts at Max Reese is every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Thanks for checking out Face the Facts at Max Reese on YouTube. If you want more politics in your feed, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to be notified whenever there's a new video.